Good evening, Europe. What's up, Eurovision people? My name is Sean, and on my channel, I think you might have guessed it by now, I talk about all things Eurovision. We're back with the live streams. We're back talking about Eurovision. We have been talking about it for the last three months now. But this is the time where we get to dissect the songs one by one, make predictions, have arguments, interrupt each other, be controversial, so on and so forth. We're going to be doing that for the next hour. I'm going to introduce you to my lovely guests this evening. You've already met all of them by now. Irvin, to my, to my right, from ESC Bubble. Becca, who's a diehard Eurovision fan from Malta, and she's been on these live streams since they were born. And Epic Eurovision guy from the channel, Epic Eurovision guy, Gerd Eston from Estonia. Good evening, guys. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. to have you again. So, tonight we're going to talk about the first half of the first semi-final. And Jesus loves me because we got running orders yesterday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Easier. Okay, yeah. hey, predictions. Um, but before we go, anyone who's watching, comment, subscribe to my channel. This content is free. This content is honest. And now that we're talking about predictions, I'd like to think that this content makes sense. So... If you want all of that, come and subscribe. And come and interact with us in the live chat. We will pull up your comments. We will interact with you. N maybe not when you put the comment, but at designated points during this live stream, we will be talking to you guys who talk to us in the chat. And let us know where you're from. We want to we wanna know where we're being seen. Um, we will be doing this live stream every Wednesday at half past nine. So you can put that down on your calendars every Wednesday. Your schedule is now booked for the next five weeks. And that you guys as well. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. We 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 all have a drink. We all have a drink. We're not gonna tell you what's in it, but we all have a drink. So if you're watching, pull up a drink. This is going to be a fun evening. And we're gonna start talking about semi-final one first half. So we're gonna go according to running order. We're going to start with Cyprus, and I'm going to go to Becca. Oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song. Can you see my sarcasm? Can you hear it? No, I couldn't <laughs> spot it. Could you be more specific, please? I did wonder when, for a second. Yeah, I <laughs> got you there. Or when, a beautiful question. Now, here's my answer about the song. <laughs> <laughs> so, Becca, so, you clearly don't like it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think so, right? Um, I mean, unfortunately, I don't like it. Um, I think I was expecting a bit different, something, I don't know, maybe different from Cyprus. I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of Cyprus, like what they send to Eurovision, but this time I'm not. I was like, like yeah, just the song didn't click with me and maybe... It will eventually, like maybe later on towards towards the show, but until now, it just yeah, I I, I don't like it. There isn't really much to say about it. It's just her singing, trying to trying to sing, trying to dance. Um, yeah. There isn't isn't much. Wow, well, say I'm normally harsh. <laughs> yeah, way to go. Oh, man. This isn't normal. this isn't I'm harsh. A I'm a bit this sleepy, is not harsh. so my heart. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be a bit, a bit harsh today. So yeah. Way to go, Eston. Yeah. What are we thinking about Cyprus? Uh, I don't hate it. I don't love it. Uh, I think it's a nice radio song. Uh, she's a talented young performer. Um, I'm hoping we can get a nice performance to kick this Eurovision season off. Um, and yeah, I mean, there just isn't really a lot to say. It was the obvious pick to open the semi final, I think. And qualification wise, uh, I think really on the borderline 50 50 might be in, might be out. Either way, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I think we're all in the same mind about this. I I was nervous for Cyprus when they said they're going to be represented by Celia Capsis, purely because I'm always nervous about young performers. 17-year-olds on the Eurovision stage are becoming a bit of a brand of nerves for me. 
She's I'm not 17? sure. She's 17. Oh, no, I she think that's for saying that. <laughs> you don't have to. You don't what, have she's to. Trying to bad sing? It's yeah. not about her, it's the song. It's about True, the, song. It's the song. It's the song, exactly. You have to keep those separate. We're, we're not criticizing the singers as personalities. True. It's as the song. I was just about to say, I don't have faith that she can execute this live. I'm sorry. I'm I'm nervous. I'm nervous for young performers, not because they're bad, but because at Eurovision we know that there are so many rehearsals, there's so much press, there's so many events going on. Irvin can tell us more. But yeah, for all that, their vocals tend to be tired on the night where it matters the most. One clear example is Emma Muscat for me. She's a brilliant singer. She made it to the top 10 of Amici. She she clearly can sing. But on the night in Turin, she didn't sing well and she was exhausted. Her vocals were tired. And I, I, I'm nervous. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm nervous for Silvia Capsis in that way. I think that that could happen, especially since she has a song where she has to execute it with choreography. She has to sing mm -hmm. the, the, the song on the pitch and key. I'm very nervous for it. I actually think now with the running order, Cyprus is out. Cyprus is out. It's not even borderline for me anymore. Mm -hmm. Cyprus is out. Final thoughts? It was never borderline for me. I always thought it was out. So True. there we go. Moving on. Yeah. Moving on to Serbia. Irvin, Serbia is a familiar territory for you. Yes, it is. Um, and let me just start by saying that, like, I'm really happy that she she won the national selection and uh, not Breskica. And uh, I'm glad that Serbia is sending Shade. something. Sorry, uh, I'm just glad that Serbia is sending something uh, actually like quite genuine and uh, in a way original and not something that was uh, made by numbers and that feels rather fake. Um, on the other hand, like the song itself is not entirely my cup of tea. Uh, however, like the first time that I listened to it, I don't know, it, the chorus of it just stayed in my head annoyingly. And I never actually went back to wanting to listen to the song again. But whenever I hear it, like for hours afterwards, I have Lila Ramonda in my head. And uh, I don't know, uh, in Eurovision, I think that she's actually going to do quite well. First of all, uh, Serbia has uh, a lot of televoting potential in the semifinal. And uh, I don't think that she's going to struggle to qualify. And I just hope that she manages to uh, like even level up the, a little bit the mood that she had in the Serbian pre-selection and just like make it uh, bigger and make it nicer in Eurovision as well. Not that it wasn't nice in the Serbian selection, but I just hope that she makes it even better. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think... When I, when I heard the song the first time, I wasn't actually impressed. I didn't think it was that immediate. But then when I when I started to get into Pesman Zaevrovi's playlist, which by the way, is one of the best three national final playlists this year, in my opinion, this song stood out a lot. It's, can, can we call this a Balkan ballad? A modern. Kind of. Not really. It doesn't have those like traditional instruments, yeah. Yeah. but the vibe it creates, it does remind me a lot of Molitva, like that silence, yes. which then becomes, which is so silent that it gets noisy and it, it fills up the arena. I think that is the impression that Ramonda is going to leave. I think this is unquestionably going to the final. Serbia has their best friends in, in the semifinal. <laughs> And even if they didn't, this song is one of the only ballads here. It's going to stand out between Serb between Cyprus and Lithuania. This is going to stand out pretty well. I, I agree with the point you made, Irvin, about the staging. I need I need some more I need some more Jamala in there. I need some more thought, like with the floralities, mm -hmm. you know. And I wish I can connect with Theodora a little bit more as a performer. But these are the, these are small changes they need to make. So they're in a good place. When you need to make small changes, you're in a good place because you're likely gonna do them. So many people are overreacting because this got the number two spot. 
Some people forget that brunette happened, that genealogy happened, Eva Rivas. But I mean, like, so, sorry for interrupting you now, Sean, but like, there's one thing that people always forget. The number two slot is, mm -hmm. let's say, cursed just for the final, because a song from number two never won Eurovision. But a song performing second in the semifinal qualified more often than song number three, <laughs> statistically. So this is not the dead spot in the semifinal whatsoever. I think it was the same, 40%, right? For both. And then number 11, I think, was yeah, at like the that. same percentage or something. That, yeah. But... Eston, what do you think about Serbia? Uh, Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> no, I, 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 I don't know what I think. I, I can't really connect the song. Um, it's a beautiful ballad. She has a great voice. The staging in Serbia was nice. Everything's there, but I, I guess what's bothering me is just how repetitive it is. It's just Lila Ramanda for basically a third of the song. Um, and yeah, I do like the song. I think it has a good chance of going through. But personally, it's in the middle of the rankings for me right now. Um, I think with a great staging uh, in Malmö, it can rise a bit. But I'm not obsessed by it. I don't really actively listen or, or look for it. Uh, when it comes on, it's nice enough. But yeah, I, I don't have any great emotions because of this. I'm just going to blame it on the fact that your Nordic soul doesn't connect to Balkan <laughs> music, right? That, that is true. I very rarely uh, like songs from Serbia, Albania, countries like that. It's just a very different uh, music style. And if you look at statistics, I mean, Estonia and the Balkans don't really exchange points ever. Uh, it goes both ways. So, but it's a nice song and I wish her the best. You know what the Estonian delegate, uh, the Serbian delegation needs to do? They need to pull off a Maltese delegation, and on the welcome party, they should buy the Estonian delegation flights, hotel rooms to visit, <laughs> to visit Estonia, <laughs> and there, the twelve points from Estonia will fly off to Serbia. At it least didn't from the jury. From Malta. <laughs> it didn't happen from Malta, but I'm sure Serbia can manage it. Someone says, after the trials, Serbia will jump into the top 10 on the odds. Um, I can see it. I can see it happening. But the reason why I also can't see it happening is I don't think the staging is going to change so much to have like Eleni Fureira impact on the odds. You know what I mean? I mean, no one is really standing out that much anymore because even Croatia is falling a little bit in the odds. And... Uh... Someone is actually going to pull through after the rehearsals. Maybe not all the way to the to the top spot, but someone is definitely going to be much higher. I mean, Serbia is 18th right now in the winning gods. Uh, I, I think this has no chance of winning. But yeah, it, somewhere in the middle of the scoreboard, um, I think is a good result. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a top 10. The I, I, I'm so glad I remembered this. Thank you, Eston. You know how so many times we say juries love ballads? You know, if there's a ballad, it, it could win the jury. So many people are thinking France is going to win the jury this year simply because it's a ballad. I, I'm in the headspace right now that if Serbia doesn't get at least top 10 in the jury, there you have it, certified bias. If this song doesn't get a top 10 in the jury in the final for me, I'm thinking that there's so much bias going on. Because if it was coming from France or maybe Italy or maybe another country, this this ballad structure would make it to the top 10 of the jury, possibly even the top five. Uh, but it's coming from Serbia. I don't know. I, I think there are... I could find 10 songs that could easily get more points in the jury than Serbia. Uh, it just 
depends on the jurors and and on the live performance vocally as well um so i wouldn't be so dramatic but uh it could reach the top 10. i would say top 15 is the border anything better than last year for serbia <laughs> moving on okay. moving on to lithuania i'm gonna start with becca me. I'm curious to find out what you think about this song because we didn't talk about it in Stockholm. Oh yeah, right, we didn't. Um, I like the song. I mean, I love the song. You know, the fact that it's in Lithuanian. Um, I think I love it even more because I like I love not just like I love when a country actually speaks or sings in their native language. And honestly, I never heard um Lithuania sing in Lithuanian. I could be. I can't tend to be corrected. Two years ago. Oh, right. Sentimental. Oh, <laughs> oh, there you go. I told you I can't send to be corrected. <laughs> well, there we are. You, you've been corrected. <laughs> you've been go, corrected quickly. You. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's, it's, I mean, it's a party anthem, I feel, song. And I feel that this year there's a theme of party, like part, like party songs. And yeah, I mean, I, I, I like the songs. And and I really would like to see this song go through the final, but I know that there's also like similar songs to it. So, yeah, I don't know, but genuinely, just oh yeah, I love the song. It's it's, it's a good it's a good song. It's, it's interesting you mentioned that there are similar songs to it because there are. However, mm -hmm. none of them are in the semi final, so I think that does benefit Lithuania. Yeah, the comparisons cool. I personally make. Go ahead. The UK. Exactly. The UK. For me, it's the queer quartet. Copyright, Alicia Michelle. The queer quartet. Belgium, Lithuania, the UK, and Switzerland. Yeah. Those are the, that, that's the, the category, that's the category of the group for me. Um, this song reminds me a little bit of Kylie Minogue in terms of production. That kind of lower bass with a little bit of synth, especially during the bridge. I don't know, it gave me Kylie Minogue. Did you see it? It's like, ah, it's like, padam, padam, no. I was thinking more of, uh, along the lines of that song, uh, Can't Get You Out of My Head, okay. the production. I don't know, that, that's that's where it took me. That's an interesting that, thing, yeah. Yeah, everyone loves this song, whether or not it sounds like Kylie Minogue. I think it's going to find very easily. Uh, mm. the, the performance is, very good. I don't expect to see many changes on the on the night. This is a, this is a straightforward yes to the final for me. And thank God it's in Lithuanian because I think if it wasn't in Lithuanian, it wouldn't be a song that I dislike. But it would be a song that I would be like, okay, it's good, but I don't get the hype. And in Melfast weekend, he performed like a pro. Mm -hmm. It did. Me? You okay, are... sorry. <laughs> I am, yes. <laughs> Do we have another Oscar, Irvin Oscar here? I checked, I was, yes. Uh, You're dressed in yellow for the twain. Uh, no. Um, I don't know, like, the song is catchy. And uh, it's, again, another song that's going to stay in your head. And, uh, like, the looked up, looked up part. Uh, obviously, like, I don't speak Lithuanian. I don't understand a single word. Um, but... I think, even though I think that like this is an easy qualifier, this is an easy qualifier in a semi-final where you have televoting only. I don't think it would be such an easy qualifier if the juries were involved as well, because the song just doesn't develop musically. It starts at a certain point and it ends at a certain point. It it has some amazing beats in it and uh, has a great rhythm. Uh, uh, Sylvester sings it well. He performs it well. However, there's just no development. This is the thing that I don't actually like about this song. But regardless of that, it's, it is very listenable. It is very catchy. And uh, as you said, he's a pro. He's going to perform the hell out of it. But I think that this is going to do much, much better with the televoters than with the juries. It's interesting. I, I would have thought this would do very well with the jury, actually. But I agree with you on the fact that the song has very weak progression. It doesn't develop anyway. Curiously, when I saw 
when I saw uh, Sylvester Bell perform it at Melfast Weekend, I was I was very curious to know how old he is because usually I think that young performers tend to suffer a little bit on the stage. And sure enough, he he was older than I thought he was. He's 26. He's my he, age. Th- right? <laughs> he's 26. Want- yeah, he looks younger, right? Mm-hmm. He, he looks like he's 17, 18. I no, not thought, that young. Like I 20, like 21, maybe. Yeah. Because yeah. he does have a baby face. He does. He does. He does. Uh, Eston, very quickly, what do you think about your neighbor? Not quite neighbor, but Baltic neighbor, yes. Sister. Um, I wasn't obsessed <laughs> with it, uh, but it's it's getting to me more and more. Uh, I, I do like the song, and I actually actively listen to it. And, um, yeah, I think it should get through to the final. Um the problem with a televote is there are a lot of televote magnets. So actually, I could see a scenario where this does better with the juries as well. Um, but we'll see. It depends on the running order in the end, uh, in the final, where hopefully Lithuania makes it, and I think they will. Moving on, this is where the punch off is about to begin. I know Don't for a fact we me. disagree. I know for a fact that we're going to disagree on this one. So I did not wake up and choose violence this morning, so I'm going to start with Ervin. What do you think of <laughs> Ireland? <laughs> I knew you were going to do Good strategy. Later, later, Good later strategy. you can go and disagree with everything I just say, right? He will. Maybe. Oh, I, I, I'm 100% sure he will. <laughs> um, for me personally, in the first half of the semi, this is my favorite. And... Uh, I like this kind of music that's a little bit all over the place, that's a little bit messy, a little bit chaotic. And for me, this absolutely works. I was also very happy with how it was performed in that horrible studio of uh, The Late Late Show. So from there, in my view, it can only go better. However, regarding its actual chances in Eurovision, I think this is not just gonna struggle to qualify, this is most probably not gonna qualify, because it is actually so niche and not a lot of people are going to like this the ones who do they're definitely going to vote for this but i feel they're going to be in like a big minority so even though i like it i i've added it to my playlist like ever since the first time i heard it but uh i'm happy she's there i'm uh, sorry i'm happy that they're there i'm happy that they made it to eurovision and uh i just hope they enjoy it and I'll enjoy listening to it. Becca. Uh, the the silence. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, she's, she agrees with everything I said. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> we all do. We all, we all do. So much. <laughs> okay. It's such so a beautiful good. entry. It is okay. It is. So, <laughs> so let me be real about this song. Mm. You're saying I wasn't real? Well, I, I want to speak for myself. <laughs> no, no, okay. she's saying that she's not going to be sarcastic this time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't like this song. It is just sorry. Um, I don't have the ear to listen to this song. For me, she's constantly. The song just is just screaming in my head, in my ears, and I was like, mm, yeah, no. I might try to listen to it. I was like, okay, let me just listen to this song and see what you know, like if it's worth to listen to. And um, I just instantly just skip through it. I I, I just can't. I can't. Mm-mm. So do I see island going through? No. And if it does, it will break my heart. Uh, is this your the, number 37 of 37? I have to say it is. Yeah. If wow. this goes through, I'm popping open the champagne. Probably the second <laughs> well, one. After the it's not going to go well, through, though. but you can open the champagne. <laughs> I will take if it, it goes through, I will drink your champagne of devastation. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I... 
So, Becca, did you watch the performance or the music video? I'm curious. I watched the music video. Wow. Okay. Wow. No, okay. No Here. Oh, so so you're telling me that the performance is worse than the music video? <laughs> I think so. I think the performance is awful. Oh. I think the performance is horrid. Eston, and... Eston is agreeing with you. This is this has never happened. This is something that should be <laughs> sometimes. This is... Sometimes. Really? Really? Sometimes. sometimes it doesn't happen yeah. very often, okay? So this is a moment we should all take a silence for. But you continue. However, um, yeah, when I watched the performance of this, I was mortified. I was. I felt like I am being dragged into a satanic ritual where I am about. <laughs> to attend a black mass and have my soul sold to some devilish forces. I was very uncomfortable. I was very scared. I was very, I, I, I forgot I'm reacting to a Eurovision song, essentially. And I reacted to it. I posted my reaction and I, <laughs> I don't think I've ever received as much hate as I received on TikTok when I reacted to the song. People were calling me all sorts of things. People were calling me old. People were calling me uh, stupid. People were calling me, were saying, I don't know what Eurovision is. Yeah. So the performance to me didn't do it at all. However, when I watched the music video, it came together much better than it did in the performance. I feel like the visual helped. I feel like the the the, the song was sung it, it sounded better and we know the the late late show in ireland is terrible sound engineering it came together a little bit better however just like becca this is still not my thing i don't have the ear to listen to the song Eric and i agree with you this is very niche and i it, it's not my thing at all i don't think that you can pull off a performance of the song because this is something that I can imagine in a movie. And I think it would do well in, a, in like a really, really satanic scene or maybe something scary, a horror movie. Why not? This should, be, this should be the soundtrack of a horror movie. But as a performance on a Eurovision stage, I genuinely think this is going to struggle to work. And for that reason, the, it's it's not even a song. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gonna say it again. It's not even a song. The melody is so there's no melody. It's just it, it's a lot of noise and production. It's it's not a song. I'm sorry. In my yes. opinion, of course. And Eurovision is a song contest. And my my biggest reason as to why I think this isn't qualifying is because the product. I, I don't I don't see people connecting to it. And if Triana Park couldn't escape last place in the semi-final out of performing in last place, I know it's not the same song, but if that couldn't do it, I don't oh, think... Oh, come I'd on. Don't it. insult no, 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 Latvia. No, no, no. Don't insult Latvia. I'm not comparing them. The other way around. I'm just saying, that song was too, 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 too unlikable. Very, but too very yeah, but it, it was, it was Latvia very, was very unlikable. <laughs> <laughs> it was very unlikable. And I don't think this is more likable than that. I could see this coming last in the semi as well. I don't think it you will. You could as well. I don't think it will. Uh, but as I said, I don't think that it stands a chance at qualifying. Eston, anything you want to add? I, I think will you do. put it in the way Becca put it. I hate this. <laughs> and it was for a long time my last place it's actually not anymore because at least in this piece of kind of song there is a piece of a song you know i guess you'd rather have a star yeah than the moon. yeah that is, that is that's kind of saves it from the last place uh, i will not ruin my last place yet that will be a big surprise for everyone Oh, but uh, no, no spoilers. Not yet, thank not yet. No spoilers. Later today. Uh, I know it. <laughs> no, it it will not qualify, and I know it has some huge fans, but they are in a very, very, very enormous major uh, minority. 
So uh, a song that is barely a song. Wow. We agreed oh, wow. so hard, Stone. I like it. A song. Just I loved awesome. your reaction, by the way. I loved it. Thank you. <laughs> All the people watching, try. don't listen to what the three of them are saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, we should. It's but it, you know, I think this this panel is a testament to what people will think. Some people are gonna think this is amazing. Some people are gonna think that this is absolutely out. And I actually think 75% of the people won't have this on, on their phones to vote for it. But 25%, like, you know, one in every not four. That, not that much. No, not that no. much. Not that much. But the, it, it's not 50-50. It's not I think, the, as you said, it's a minority. That, it's a very loud minority, with the exception of Irvin, who's a very reasonable part of this minority, because you've... You've understood that this is qualified. No, but I've seen people that are thinking this coming top 10. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? But I, I, oh, I there are, there are people one. thinking it will win. So <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> there are people thinking anything can win. Yeah, but, true, uh, true. Re regarding it being memorable or not, this is going to be a lot more memorable and this is going to stay in people's minds for the performance itself, if for nothing else, much more than, for example, Cyprus. I agree. Even though Cyprus mm -hmm. is a generally mm -hmm. more, let's say, likable or should be more likable. I agree. I, I, agree. That, yeah. I don't necessarily think it's going to be remembered for the right reasons, but I agree. I completely agree. Moving on to the Ukraine. Congratulations, mm -hmm. Ukraine, on qualifying for the European Championships from the playoffs. You did beat Iceland, I believe, and we will see you in Germany later on this year in summer. Back to Eurovision. <laughs> <laughs> that was a quick diversion <laughs> right but i like i like football um i'm gonna start with eston uh well ukraine is doing it again it seems uh this is an excellent entry and mm -hmm. if they manage to get what they were sixth last year right yeah. Um, if they managed to get sixth position with a song that I think would have barely qualified if it was from any other country, then this can definitely win. I think the juries will love this. I think the public Ukraine will love this. Ukraine was automatically in the final last year. They yes, but I, I'm, I'm thinking if it was ah, okay, from okay, another okay. country and it had to qualify, mm -hmm. I think it would really struggled oh, okay sorry um so there's of course the entire background with the war etc uh, that will grant them a lot of votes anyway a lot of ukrainians living in other countries etc but this song give it to another country give it just a normal regular year this would be in the top 10 guaranteed top five likely so i think ukraine is probably still the favorite to win uh, because it will get balanced votes and high votes from both the jury and the televote. With a lot of songs, we have the issue that it's only a televote magnet or the jury will mostly like this, but the televote might not come through. With this, there's no question. So it's a beautiful song. Thank you, Ukraine, for sending this. Thank you for waiting for another day to, to send this, because if the jury would have decided, we would have... We, yeah, we would have missed out. So, um, beautiful song. I love it. And I think it has a very good chance of winning. And this time, actually, it would be justified. Lovely. And I love the ending. Musical break. Of this theme. Yeah. <laughs> um, Becca. <laughs> Um, I couldn't agree more with what Eston said. I mean, I love this song, especially the fact that there's this orchestra thing going on. Sean knows how much I love that, like the, that kind of orchestra sounds. Um, in it's a not song, orchestra, my dear, it's opera. No, ah, it's orchestra. Okay, <laughs> it's not opera. <laughs> I got it right this time. Um, is it a way? It's open. It's open. <laughs> You're talking about Jerry Hill when she starts going like, Ooh. yes, yes, okay, sorry. Opera. <laughs> Opera and orchestra. Again, I got it wrong. <laughs> it was a long day. It was. 
Um, anyways, um, I love also that there's this kind of rap as well in it, and it really goes well with the melody of the song. And I definitely see the song coming, I think, maybe top 10. And I read, I, I think it's I, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, I mean, I've only like heard this recently, like I think this week for the first time. I was like, okay, I'm hooked. I'm constantly listening to it nowadays. And yeah, so I'm definitely rooting for Ukraine. Not to win, but I'm rooting <laughs> us, for Ukraine. Tell us who your favorite from Vidbeer was. <laughs> it was very... <laughs> it was man of a dreamer. I was obsessed with that little, song. Little bit, of a, all, little bit of a funny, funny story. It's not so your it's, fault, Sean. It's it is my fault. fault. So we are in Stockholm for Melody Festival, then, and while we're like getting ready, I I play them some songs from from the national finals that maybe not a lot of people caught on to. And as soon as I played Melvin's song, Becca, like she just, you know, when like a little baby tells you again, again, again. <laughs> I think that night we heard Dreamer about six times. And I was like, what did I do? To to the least. And I don't even dislike that song. It's a catchy I song. I spent the whole trip that was like four days just constantly listening to that song on repeat. To the point that I got my friends hooked on it. I was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> From Elovin to Irvin, what do you think of Ukraine? Um. <laughs> Good transition, right? <laughs> okay, yeah, no. Perfect. No, I don't mind the song at all, actually. Uh, it's really well put together. I think that the mix of the kind of like ethnic, a little bit traditional rap mm -hmm. and the tries of the opera there. Uh, all somehow work and uh i genuinely think this is an easy qualifier this is gonna end up in the top 10 in the final uh as long as they stage it nicely and it's ukraine so they are gonna stage it nicely and very cleverly so no doubts about that um i wouldn't necessarily look up this song and play for it uh play it sorry um it's just not something that I would normally listen to but uh when I watch Eurovision I normally enjoy this kind of songs on the night and I will enjoy it in the both in the semi and in the final. This is easily qualifying. Yeah, this is going through to the final. I think this is coming top five in the in the in the final actually. The I think it's gonna get a balanced result between Televote and Jury. And I think that's gonna help it. Um but I do need them to tweak the staging. I didn't like the staging in Vidbir at all. Coming from Ukraine, I thought that staging was very lackluster. I think they can do better. And they will do better because Ukraine will. The staging team is is probably the most creative team we have at Eurovision. Such as Jean Baptiste, Mar Marvin, Marvin Dietman, they can dream of having creativity as much as the Ukrainian people. God knows who they. Don't are. forget Moldova. Uh, what's his name? The Greek guy. Um, um, yeah, Moldova, but like he's done some of Moldova's. Focus Evangelinos. Yeah, focus. Mm. He's done some of the, the stagings that Moldova is very well known for. But yeah, back to Ukraine. I think I think Ukraine is probably it might win the semi-final. If it's not winning the semi-final, I think it's coming second. Very easily. Um just before we move on to the next country, I see some of you guys joining on the stream. Hello. We are having a drink and we're talking about Eurovision, the first semi final, the first half of the first semi final. And come and subscribe to my channel because we're going to be doing this every Wednesday for the next five weeks. Lots of content, lots of honesty, and it's all free. So come and subscribe. You don't want to miss any of it. Moving on to Poland. And we are kicking things off with Becca because I have no idea what you think of this song and I'm so curious. <laughs> Clearly, you are. Um... Poland. Mm. I mean, I've heard this song live when we went to um, Belfast. Um, I was not impressed with the song, really, to be honest. I mean, I didn't move me at all. I mean, there was no emotions going around, going on. Um, and even listening to the song again, I mean, it's like, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. It's just there. It's just there, you know? I mean, I don't think, I don't think, sorry, I don't think it will go through to the final. And I personally, I think this is like my 34th or 33rd song. That, yeah, from the bottom, yeah. So really, it's, it's just a song that's there. So I'm not really Fair. much of an opinion about Poland. I'm sorry. Fair. It's a middling song. Eston. I do actually quite Poland. like it. Um, it is in my top 15 at the moment. Uh, yeah, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> um, listen, it's it's a, not anything special, but it's a pleasant song that just sometimes, on some days, I cannot get out of my head. It is just there playing round and round and round and round and it's I, I can't get it out so it's i think memorable it has a nice beat i hope she can perform it live as well um we haven't really had any live performances of it i don't think so um Memphis and it has speaking. a lot of ah okay how was it mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so then there might be some doubts, but the the pros uh, are for Poland that it has a lot of allies in the semifinal. Uh, so that might help them go through. Without their friends, I think this would struggle a lot and probably not qualify. Based on the song, nope. Based on friends, it might. So I guess borderline. Um, but a nice entry. Erwin from neighboring Poland. We're not neighboring it. No. Nowhere near. <laughs> well, you're in the same Two in ge geography. What's, what, what's it called? <laughs> Visegrad countries? Yeah. However, like we're the one that's like the most southern in Poland is the most northern one. Yeah. Um, I agree I with this on this. find out today. That Estonia and Lithuania aren't neighbors, and neither are Poland wait. and the country. So. <laughs> wait, wait, did I hear correctly? Erwin is agreeing with me on something? Yes, yes. however, what? Sean yeah, interrupted however, me, so however, didn't however, actually, however, I didn't however. actually get to the end of that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> At least something, something. Yeah, something. It's a beginning. Yes, it's a start, yes. Uh, I agree with you on the fact that this is borderline. That's what I okay. wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> Um, for me, this is just like any radio song nowadays that you're going to play, like, I don't know. I, I normally just listen to radio in my car when I drive. If this comes on, I'm not going to change the station. I'd gladly listen to it. I'll probably also speed up because my uh, speed of driving normally depends on the music that is being played on the radio. <laughs> uh, I'm one of those people. And uh, that's it. The other thing that I think is very positive about this is the color of her voice, because I think it is very unique with this kind of like very, very soft voice. And if she manages to sing it like that live, like she does in studio, then I think it's going to stand out because of that. Otherwise, eh, not really my cup of tea. I wouldn't play it by choice, but if it comes on, I'm never going to skip it. What color is her voice? It's kind of like just like very soft, in a way like I don't know. Um, in a way, kind of like childlike, or I, I don't know how to explain that. But her voice is very different to everyone else's in this competition, and it really stands out for me. Interesting metaphor. She reminds me a lot of Ellie Goulding. I you know who that is? Ellie Goulding. I know who she is, but. <laughs> I'm a little sure bit, you know, a little somewhere bit. too. Yeah, she reminds me of Eddie Goldie. Um, yeah, this is very mid for me. I don't think it's qualifying because of the running order. Again, it's sandwiched between the, the possible top two in the semi. And unless there's an ad break or something, I can totally see this being overshadowed by both Ukraine and Croatia, who's coming up next. And on this, it's spirit, not going to overshadow the Polish people around Europe. And it probably will have an ad break just before. It's interesting you mentioned that, Erwin, because Rafal didn't qualify. Tulia didn't qualify, even though they would have qualified with the televotes. 
like it, the Polish diaspora, is it is it actually that powerful? I guess we will find out. I'm sorry, if Rafael would have qualified with Televote, then yes. <laughs> no, 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 Rafael wouldn't have qualified. I wouldn't have, oh, okay, good. <laughs> Julia would have. I mean, I don't, I don't like any of those two, to be perfectly fair. And I think both of those deservedly did not qualify, but I this is much better for me past, than any of those two. In the past, we have made, like, I remember in, in the days of, but really when Poland came back to Eurovision, I remember we talked a lot about the Polish diaspora and things like this. Um, and, I, you know, there have been years where Poland didn't qualify. So... But listen, just, just looking at it, like from the countries uh, that are participating in the semi and voting in the semi. So Poland is definitely going to have Lithuania. It's going to have Ukraine. It's going to have Germany. Um, the UK. It's probably going to have Finland, UK, Moldova. So even if it just picks up everywhere like fours and fives, that's going to be enough for them to qualify. Because in a semi-final of 15, you're only going to need 40 points to qualify. Yeah. They have a leg up with the friends that they have in the semi-final. Yeah, that is true. And also, uh, I know Ireland is going to vote more for Lithuania than Poland, but yeah. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, you might be right. They might, yeah, they might make it to 11. <laughs> I mean, I, um, won't, I won't be surprised with this, regardless whether it makes it or doesn't. Because if it does, yeah. I don't think it's going to finish higher than 8th. And if it doesn't, I don't think it's going to finish lower than 12th. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, a, that's a fair prediction. Um, moving on, the last song in this first half of this first semi-final, and to many of us, this is maybe the most interesting song in this first half of the first semi-final. It's the bookie's favorite to win Eurovision, as we speak, not with a huge margin, but Croatia is number one in the betting odds to win Eurovision. And I am starting with Eston. Well, I'm very surprised. I know what you think about this, and I'm very surprised that you do think about this. So, share. Okay. Uh, well, I will postpone because it seems I have clients, so I will speak later on. Lovely. Well, I'm going to kick it off then. <laughs> Excuses. This, yeah, the Hosa Vekiaya Ding Dong Bar is busy. He will he will tell us all about it later. Um, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick it off about Croatia. I love this. I love the song from the minute I heard it. I think Baby Lasagna is an excellent artist. It's it's funny because this is like his first gig. This was his no, first not. performance. No, it wasn't. He was in a band. Yes. Okay, it's his first solo gig. Correct? Okay. <laughs> cool. It's his first solo gig. Um, and he is the odds-on favorite to win Eurovision. Oh, we have additional guests. We have clients. <laughs> we have clients. <laughs> Um, Subscribe to our channel. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Sean's channel. Yeah, do that. <laughs> right, right. Croatia. The song is incredible. I love it. I think the performance at Dora needs work, mm -hmm. but what makes what makes this product a fair contender to win Eurovision, in my opinion, is the fact that the song is very immediate. The song is, the song has the right ingredients that you would expect a Eurovision winning song to have. I'm not talking about Eurovision formula, I'm talking about Eurovision winners. Um, I'm laughing because... <laughs> There's always a first. There's always a first. Oh, they They see us. Yes. They see us. Yeah, they, they do. They, they are Eurovision fans probably as well. I mean, they're in the Husavikia mm -hmm. Ding Dong Bar. Um, okay. They yeah. can join the the chat if they want to, I guess. Moral of the story, I love Croatia this year and I really, really would be happy to go to Croatia next year to Eurovision. And I swear, no, I swear to say that. If, if Eurovision happens in Croatia, I want to go. I want to go to Eurovision and the Balkans. This you is my said that when, years. you also said when Italy wins Eurovision, you also I did. go, yeah. <laughs> I did. I and did we go to see Eurovision in Italy? No. Let's hope Croatia wins. So maybe I can keep my promises for once. Erwin, what do you think of Baby Lasagna? 
I think that I should be liking this song a lot more than I do. Because this is very similar to the kind of music that I normally enjoy and that I normally listen to. But this doesn't completely grab me. And I had a similar feeling with the Finnish entry from a couple of years ago, uh, Dark Side. Oh, uh, which was also pretty pretty good. But it it also just didn't reach there. Like where where I feel that like it should have gone where it should have reached, is the same thing with this song. Um, still, it, it's a great song. It is very catchy. Uh, I think that he's gonna perform it well at Eurovision. Also, in Dora, literally no one sounded good apart from uh, Sliman and Raven. And <laughs> oh, and Damir Kejo, sorry. Uh, the three of them sounded perfectly. No one else did. Baby Lasagna. Included. Marcella. I thought Marcella sounded fine. Um, okay, good for you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I expect this to, to be much better in Eurovision. This is going to qualify very easily. I'm not sure whether it is actually going to win or not. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think it has like higher chances because there's not such like an obvious um, an obvious contender for victory this year. So <laughs> I think this is why like he's very much up there. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is not going to have any issues qualifying for the final. So yeah, I, I just wish I liked it more than I actually do. Fair. Aston. I have no idea what you just uh, discussed, but, uh, yes, uh, Sean, you are right. I do very much like this. <laughs> it is, uh, <laughs> it is my... First Anything to not agree with me? <laughs> oh, you didn't. Oh, not even with Croatia. Come on. Uh, um, he likes I, it. He's just not obsessed with it. Like I do are. like it. He I'm just not obsessed. It. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I wouldn't say I'm obsessed with it either, but I very much love it. Um, there you go. I made you two agree on something else. Yeah. Winning wise, I'm not too sure. Um, it might win the televote if it's staged perfectly. Uh, if the vocals, they have improved. The latest live was a, was a lot better uh, already. Um, so it might win the televote, but the jury is the question now. Um, it might get something similar as Gary last year. It might be enough. It might not be enough. Um, I'm pretty sure it will be in the top five. Anything further than that uh, is is a bit of a question mark. But I would love if, if Croatia won because first victory, another country that that would finally win Eurovision. And it, I mean, I would go to Croatia for Eurovision, one hundred percent. I think we. I all said would. I'm going as well. Are um, we going together? <laughs> There you go. Let's go. Uh, I'm going this year anyway, but <laughs> but that would be a lovely place to have a second Eurovision, and uh, I am rooting for Croatia, and I hope they can pull it off. Becca, very quickly, I know you like this song, but how much do you like it? I mean, I love this song, but I have to agree with Irvin. I am not obsessed with this song. I mean, um, I said, I mean, I love it definitely, and if. Croatia wins, I would be definitely happy for them. And I might actually go watch Eurovision in Croatia. But I'm just not obsessed with it. I mean, I think I maybe see it like second or coming second or third, but not maybe actually winning Eurovision. I agree with you a little bit that it is a bit of a long shot. We still have juries and we know how yeah. juries behave and we know that juries are not... Um, Never mind. I'm not going to say what I thought the day was. I mean, say. like, but even even the juries, like, um, this is one thing that like a lot of people forget. The juries are people, and they're also going to vote in their really? like overall impression. And I mean, who would have thought that Austria last year is going to finish in the top ten with the juries and going to be between the last ones in the public? Because everyone right. expected it to be the other way around. I mean. Well done. <laughs> and, and Australia the same. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. just Gary ate up all the, all the televotes. So there was nothing mm -hmm. left. Um, but 
I mean, let's be honest, Gary wasn't a great vocalist, and uh, I can I, I was surprised it got so high with the juries actually. Um, with Croatia, I feel like if he can nail the vocals, this has a chance, uh, maybe even a bigger chance than than Finland uh, to to getting uh, jury points. But if the vocals are similar to what we heard in Croatia, then I would very much understand if the jury just tanks it. I think what's going to make or break Croatia's chances at Eurovision is one, they will have to win the televote. And I think they have much more competition than Karia had. However, I think they, that this year there isn't a, an obvious jury winner like Laureen was. And this is a tale of two jury fourth places. One of them won Eurovision, one of them didn't. I'm talking about Moneskin and I'm talking about Karia. They both came fourth in the jury with a similar score. However, in the year of Moneskin, the jury was very undecided. The gap between France and Switzerland was very small. Whereas the gap between um, Sweden and whoever came second in the jury last year, it wasn't, it wasn't small at all. Lorin ran, ran away with it. So it, it's going to come down to mathematics in reality. And on that note, I want to make one final question to all of you. I always do it on these live streams. One potential shock qualifier and one potential shock non-qualifier in this first half of the semifinal. Ervin. Shock non-qualifier? Like, I don't know. Um... Hmm. I mean, obviously, it would be a shock if Croatia or Ukraine don't qualify, but I don't see that happening whatsoever, or Lithuania. Um, I can make a reason why any of the other ones might not qualify. Mm -hmm. um, shock qualifier, I'll just go with Ireland. Oh, my God, imagine that. Of course, of course you do. Fair, <laughs> fair. At this point, for me, the shock qualifier, to me, would be Poland... And the shock non-qualifier, even though I'm I'm sure it's not qualifying, but just going off of what the fandom is thinking, if Cyprus doesn't qualify, too many, it will come across as a shock non-qualifier. So I'm saying Cyprus non-qualifier and Poland qualifier. Um, Eston. Uh, the only shock for me qualifying-wise would be Ireland. Um, we honest, agree. I, I, I do have a do have a chance. Shock non-qualifier. Um, I would say I, I could even see a scenario where either Serbia or Lithuania don't qualify. I think Serbia even has a slightly higher chance than uh, Lithuania. I, I can see how this can get a little bit forgotten, especially we have to remember the UK is there as well and performing after Lithuania. So. That is true. That would be a shock. Um, yeah, I'm going to stick there. Becca? Um, I'm going to go with... Mm, I mean, Ireland? Bang. Yeah. A shock qualifier? Yeah. Shock non-qualifier. Shock non-qualifier. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I don't know about the about the other one. I mean, well, at this point, we've mentioned every country in this first. Yeah. So I think we can. I think we can leave it today, guys. Yeah, thank you so much for joining this first live stream of 2024, where we're reacting and predicting to. We're predicting the the, the halves of the semifinals in this year's Eurovision. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for joining. We will be back next Wednesday at the same time Yay. at half past nine on this channel. Come and subscribe for more content. Come and like, come and follow me on Instagram, threads, Twitter, TikTok. And we will see you again next Wednesday. Good night and thank you for watching. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye.